Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Stuff Steve Likes, and it's just a nice day out here, relaxing. Just made a cutting board for a co-worker of mine, and I got this spoon blank that I uh, axed out a little earlier, and I'm just doing some, some of the final carving on it, so I'm just going to do, I'm just going to talk and carve a little bit, and you can tune in and listen, or you can tune out and watch a different channel, it's up to you. But anyway, I'm just I'm just doing the kind of the shaping and everything on the spoon here. So again, I'm using my uh, my Mora Basic 511. I just really love this knife for wood carving. It's a very good knife for that. I call this a thumb lever. I'm not sure if that's what it's actually called, but just kind of dig in with your thumb. You can use either the tip of your thumb or kind of the inside here, but. This one wants to get a little chippy on me there, but when it comes to carving, you can't really rush it. You just have to you just have to enjoy the journey, find out where where the wood wants to go. And I'm gonna round this bowl off up here a little bit. And it's just about enjoying the moment, and uh, you know the world is full of stuff that makes you just want to tune out and uh, you know a lot of people can go through life tuned out but um, that's not the way to do it you want to just enjoy the day that you're in be thankful for the day that God's given you and you know I mean what else can you do find something that makes you appreciate life appreciate nature and okay and the timer just went off for my kids' taquitos, so I will be back in just a second. All right, and we are back. You gotta feed the kids while Mama's out shopping. That's just how it is. The kids, they, they like to eat, so. Anyway, back to carving. I don't even know what we were talking about. I think we were talking about just finding something that you enjoy, and it can be music, it can be, uh, you know, a hobby, it can be an activity. Just find something that you enjoy that uh, that gets you back to, just kind of gets you back to the basics in your head. You know, you kind of forget about what's bumming you out, what's stressing you out, all that. I mean, we just, unfortunately, in this day and age, we just deal with a lot of stress and it's a lot of unneeded stuff. And putting my back into this a little bit more. I've got some bigger chunks to dig out. I usually go farther with the axe, like I'll take a little bit more of this out, but I thought, nah, today I'll just carve. Yesterday was a little bit of a stressful day for me, so this is just going to kind of help me uh, help me out. And um, I would say, unless you're a woodworker, you know, on a regular basis, you don't know what I'm talking about. But once you start doing it, you start carving and uh, bushcrafting and all that stuff, it just really, it just really helps you out and it just gives you, it just gives you something to focus on. It's not work or you know finances or anything like that. And it just, uh, just is really, some really. Really great therapy. There we go. This is this grain is wanting to kind of fight me there, so I'm going to come in on this side. Okay. Yep, see, this side the grain wants me to work this way, and the other side it wants me to work the other way. So that's what I'm going to do. The woods uh, going to do what the woods going to do, and you can't change it. So. Thin out some of this back here again, a little bit more of this. Yeah, this I could definitely use a little bit more time with the axe here, especially in this area. 
but this knife does a nice nice job of that, thinning that out. Again, I'm using that thumb lever, and that's a really really safe way to cut. You can see my fingers are on this side. The blade's not gonna if the blade slips anywhere, it's gonna go off here. But you know, always think about safety, always think about where people are around you. Make sure that uh, your kids aren't around or anybody that uh, that's in harm's way. We're supposed to be camping today, but our um, coolant system on our vehicle went out and we ended up having to stay home. And we actually got down the road a little ways. We had to get towed. Um, thankfully, I had uh, coverage on the camper and on the and on the Suburban to get a tow, so we didn't have to pay too much out of pocket for that. Now the Suburban's in the shop and all that, so that was kind of stressing me out. And you know, we're uh, well taken care of, and and uh, you know, God's provision is good. But uh, still, stuff like that can get you down, and it's it's an unexpected expense. And you're not thinking about that happening, and then it does, and then all of a sudden you kind of get kind of get thrown into that ordeal. And the, you're on the side of the road with a wife, three kids, and two dogs, and you're the one kind of in charge. And you know, it's a, it makes for a stressful day on many many levels. And so I woke up this morning and said, you know what? I can't be in nature out camping, but I'm going to make the best of it, so let's do some woodwork. So that's what I'm doing. And I hope you guys are able to see some of this, what I'm doing here. If not, you can just listen and maybe I'll put you to sleep. But a lot of the, a lot of the YouTube videos I like are just guys talking about, you know, what they're doing. and. Um, kind of uh, talking about everyday life. Sometimes you don't need to watch a review on another knife or another gun or this or that or the other thing. You need to just listen to somebody somebody talking. So that's what we're doing here. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm kind of shaping the bowl a little bit. And this one I'm going to make a little bit deeper bowl on this. You can see how that's kind of thick. A lot of the spoons I make are real thin through here, but I'm going to make this one a little bit deeper, so I don't want to go too go too far there. And I'll try to round this out a little bit more. Didn't feel safe with that cut, so I stopped. Anytime you feel like something's unsafe, uh, the way that you're cutting something, change what you change your grip, change what you're doing, and uh, you're probably right. You know, if you we have a we have a conscience and a warning in our hearts for a reason, and if something doesn't feel safe, no matter what you know, what stage of life you're in, you probably need to listen to it. I believe that we were. given that for a reason and so it's probably a good good deal good idea to listen to it so there we go just thin it, thinning that out you can see it's even looking more and more like a spoon blank and again you know this is handmade the spoon doesn't have to be perfect you're you're making this for somebody um, for a, you know for a special gift an occasion a birthday uh, um, you know, Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever it is, and uh, these are going to be Christmas gifts for us. You know what else this works really well for? Is somebody who invites you over for dinner. Like uh, a couple of months ago, my wife's friend invited us over for dinner, and I said, you know what? I'm going to make her a bowl, and I made a serving bowl, and my wife liked it so much that she said, you're not going to give that to her. I want that. And so uh, I made her friend a spoon. <laughs> so she uh, she liked what I made so much that uh, that she, she said that she wanted it. And hey, 
happy wife, happy life. So I let her have the serving bowl, and uh, I made a spoon for her friend, and her friend was just really, uh, really happy with it. And, you know, a lot of people bring over flowers or something like that. Well, think of this. Okay, you make somebody a spoon that could potentially last a lifetime, and I'm feeling safe about that cut either. There we go. And, um, you know, you make somebody a spoon that could potentially last a lifetime, or give them a, you know, a bottle of champagne or something like that that's going to be gone in one evening or uh, you know some flowers that are going to be dead in a week you know if you made them a made them a spoon to say thank you that would be that would be a great a great idea there we go and i'm getting way up here so you just be careful see how my fingers are all curled around like that you just you gotta save those digits man all right Got a phone call coming in, and I'm gonna go check on the kids, and I'll be back in a minute. All right, that phone call was from the auto repair place, and said that the truck is fixed, two hundred thirty-eight dollars, and she's back to her old self. So, all good. We are not stressing out because we are carving wood. So. You know, the uh, author of the uh, Bushcraft books, uh, there's a Bushcraft 101 and then Advanced Bushcrafting. His name is Dave Canterbury. And he said that a lot of people call woodcraft and, uh, you know, camping and all that roughing it. But he actually calls it smoothing it. And it, I think that's so cool that he calls it that because it really does. We have so many rough edges in our society. You turn on the news and there's some you know there's a tragic shooting there's you know kidnappings all this stuff it's like man sometimes we just have to get away and it's not it's not an escapist mentality and it has nothing to do with with uh you know putting your head in the sand it just has to be it has to do with you being able to you know find a balance and not you know and not worry all the time and that's something that music has done for me for for my entire life Music has always been that, um, you know, a really great balancer in my life. And, um, and so I, I appreciate that. My, you know, my church family, my, you know, my wife, my kids, they all give me, you know, they all give me that balance, you know. You do, you do everything in moderation. I believe that, um, that that's true. And I believe that also includes, um, you know, intake of media, news, all that, you know, um, and uh, so you got to find something to do with your time, and, uh, you know, music is definitely that for me, and then uh, woodcrafting, camping with my family, which totally bums me out that we're not camping right now, we have so much fun camping and hiking and fishing and all that kind of stuff, but hey, you know, when life gives you Lemons, you make lemon meringue pie, so, or something like that. That's not what the saying actually is, but you know what I mean. You know, you do your best with it, and all right. I'm holding the spoon here, and I'm going like this, so it's all I'm doing is flicking my wrist. So see, I'm not going to, like, jab the knife into my arm, because all I'm doing is moving my wrist like this. That's the only motion I can make. So, always think safety. Okay, and I'm getting this whittled down as it goes, and even more shape on the handle. Okay, even more shape. And I'm coming in and kind of knocking out a few of those chips there. And again, you're just going to have to work with it. There's, you know, no piece of wood is perfect, and so you're just going to have to work with what you've got. Honestly, um, this is that sinker cypress. And that uh, seems to be working really well. Sinker wood is wood that has been at the bottom of a river for however long. You know, it could be a couple of decades, it could be 50 years, 100 years, 200 years. But what it does is it really soaks up the, the moisture and minerals 
as it does that through osmosis and it actually preserves the wood, which is crazy because you think wet wood turns into rotten wood, but sinker wood actually gets preserved you know, through that process and um, really comes out with beautiful grain. I mean, you can just see the, the grain on this if you, can, if you can see that there. But it's really beautiful grain and I'm really impressed with the way this is carving. So, wow, that's, that's really nice. And uh, the uh, place that I go for wood, they have this on pallets and it's, it, they, they call it shorts. What that means is that basically it's the ends and pieces of larger pieces of lumber, but um, this one was uh, five feet long and I got it for $7, which is absolutely incredible especially for a piece of sinker wood and a lot of times they'll you know they'll have you pay a premium for that but I guess they got a deal on it but anyway it's really really turned out nicely and I'm doing a video or it's it might come out about the same time as this one on a cutting board that I made with with sinker cypress so uh, and I've made a few of them and they've turned out really beautiful so um, and each piece has its own unique grain and you'll find that with every piece of wood some some woods like maple and uh, you know poplar and other woods like that are a little bit more um, what's the word a little bit more even grained where you kind of know what you're getting into before you even get into it but but a wood like this or a wood like cedar or you know some of those woods that can be a little bit more gnarly um, you know a lot of times you just have to work with them and. Um, But this seems to be working really well. So, you notice I'm whittling into the trash can, and that is goes back to that saying, happy wife, happy life. I'm trying not to make a mess out of the garage. So you always do you always gotta do what you can do to uh, keep your lady happy, because that is very important. Okay. So there's a good rough shape there, and I don't know how deep I'm going to go on this bowl yet. So what I'm actually going to start doing is carving the bowl. I'm going to go grab my little um, my little gouge here, and I'll be right back. All right, and I'm back. And what I have here is my little my little gouge. And this is a, called a Flex Cut. It's a company, it's a USA company, American made company. And you can see it's just got a little curvature to it there to dig the wood out. And the handle's really, I wasn't sure what to think about it. The handle's really comfortable. It kind of lets you get in like that. Now what I'm gonna do is um, I've got my strop here and strops are not only for knives, but I'm just gonna run it here kind of like this. It's just going to take any burr that might be on there, take a burr, burr off of this, and then I'm just going to run it one time right here on the side like that, just a couple of times. Okay, do your test, do your shaving test, and we are shaving sharp, great. People always freak out when I do the shaving test. If somebody's here watching me do this, they're like, what, what are you doing? And uh, hey, you gotta be, able to, uh, gotta be able to test your sharpness, so. Anyway, but as all I'm doing is holding the knife, and I'm just gouging a little bit out at a time. Right now I'm going with the grain because I'm, I'm wanting to go pretty, uh, you know, pretty deep here. And on this side, I'm going to go this way, like that. And on the other side, I'm going to come in the other way, because you always want to work down into the grain. If you work up, you're going to chip it out. So, and there's, there's not really a good way to do this on this side, um, other than, you know, trying to hold it on something like this. And Watch my knuckle there. I'm gonna bust it open if I'm not careful. Okay. And I've got enough. This this wood seems to be cooperating, so 
And I'm going to lift up a little bit on these as I get them there, and then I can just kind of I can just kind of break them off, or I could even kind of chisel it off here like that. And you can see I'm just making little uh, little gouges in there, and that a lot of that will clean up as I go. And I've got a I've got a con uh, convex scraper or concave. I can't remember how they differentiate those. One goes is rounded and one is like a half moon if you want to think of it that way but whichever one that's going to help me quite a bit just kind of get that work in there and I really like this there's um uh, Mora the the company that makes this knife they also make a what they call a spoon knife or a curved knife and you kind of go like this with it but I mean there's more than one way to cook a steak, so um, basically I'm just doing this and I'm being real careful, making sure that I'm making very careful cuts. What you can do as well is you can kind of work it in there a little bit and then kind of turn it sideways and it'll, it'll gouge it out. Like that. That's working really well. And you're being very conscious of where your other hand is, how much force you're applying. Um, the last thing you want to do is put something right into your hand. So you have to be super careful. And honestly, I mean, anytime you're dealing with a sharp tool, I'm actually going to stand up. I think that'll work better for me. Anytime you're dealing with a sharp tool, there's always going to be risk involved. But your your best countermeasure is your brain. That's your best the best tool you got is your brain. You know, if something doesn't feel safe. Then move positions, stand up, do whatever you have to do to get yourself into a safe position. But yeah, me standing up is really helping me out here. You can see I'm getting nice big chips. So what I'm going to do here is I don't feel safe going this way. So I'm going to go to the side. And you can see how that chipped out really nice for me there. And go to the side. Watch my fingers. And go like that. And here, I'm going to go like this, and you see how if I slip, there's no way that that's going to get me. So I'm going to go this way. And be very careful with my strokes. But, see that part wants to chip out a little bit there, so I'll come over on this side, and I make that grain work for me. So, continue to do this, and continue to use very, very small strokes. And see here I'm actually counterbalancing with my finger here. So if I do slip a little bit, my finger itself is actually catching there. So, you know, em employ any method you can to be safe and you'll be safe. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to come in from the side. I'm going to hold this off to the side here. Kind of use my leg as a little counterbalance on the trash can. And just keep working this out. This wood seems to really be cooperating with me, so I'm just going to see it's actually not chipping out, which is really incredible because I'm going across the grain here. But with that scraper, it's going to smooth all those little divots out. And you can see I'm already getting a good, good little bowl going there. And it's a little rough, but again, that scraper is going to take care of a lot of that. So, All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut this right here, work a little bit more on this, and then I'll come back. Okay, I I guess I didn't realize I was recording before, but uh, I guess you saw me do my little trimming of the spoon bowl, but there you go. You can see a much more defined spoon bowl. It looks, still looks a little rough, but I'm going to show you a scraper. This is my scraper. It kind of looks like a an obese uh, gingerbread man, sort of, uh, if that's something, uh, or uh, like a turtle sort of. But basically what it is, is each one of these is a different uh, different circle diameter. And 
these are what they had before uh, they had sandpaper. So what you do is you just come in and you scrape like this. And look at how much sawdust we already have in there. It really uh, smooths out the sides, takes away all the tooling marks and everything. And man, it really puts a nice, nice polish on the wood. push too hard and just kind of you got to work with the grain so this way I'm working down into the bowl always work down into the bowl so much smoother that is inside I still got a little ways to go but um, this way I'm gonna Actually, come like this so I can see a little bit better. And this thing's not sharp. I mean, you're not going to cut yourself on this, so you can kind of, if you go a little crazy with the scraper, you're not going to hurt anybody. Continue to work on this. edges out of the bowl. You can work as fast or slow as you want. You can do one spoon a day, you can do ten spoons a day, you can make five cutting boards a day, you can make one a week. It's totally up to you. But I've done spoons, cutting boards, I uh, made a bowl for my wife, which is her one of her prized possessions that she absolutely loves. Um, I made a little, you know the spoon holder that you put on the, the stove top that kind of cradles your spoon? I made one of those. I actually made a mistake on a project, and I made that out of that mistake. It was kind of, kind of an interesting thing, but... A lot of times in life, you make a mistake and you're like, man, nothing could ever come out of this that's good. But I don't believe that's the way that God works. I believe that good things do come out of bad things. And so it's really what you make out of it. But see we're really really getting smooth there now there's a few little ridges in there again you're not making you know this isn't high art this isn't you know van gogh we're not we're not assembling a piano here we're making a spoon to stir some food with you know it's not it's not high art there's probably some people that could make it that way but it's not really really necessary. People want stuff that looks old school. On one of my other videos, I think I called it farmhouse chic. You know, they want that kind of, you know, that ship lap is coming back and the, the barn wood is coming back and all that. You know, that stuff is cool now and it gives, um, it gives the guys that are actually making stuff by hand a leg up on the store-bought stuff. These people want that non-mechanized look, you know. And I gotta be honest with you, a lot of the a lot of the uh, spoons and stuff that you buy anymore, they develop cracks. They dry the wood out too much. They get cracked. They split. And not to say that this spoon could never split, but you know, this is a you know you pick your nice piece of lumber and trust that it's going to do what you want it to do and you shouldn't have to worry about it so all right there we go that's looking really good okay now what this needs is 
a little bit more work. Kind of thinning a little bit more of this out. See, I wasn't, remember I told you before, I wasn't sure how thick I was going to make this. So I wasn't sure how much of this I needed to take off, but now I know. I know how deep my bowl is, so I know how deep I can go. So I'm going to go ahead and thin off the rest of this. Again, always being conscious of where our other fingers are, where other people are around us. Keep us keep everybody safe. I'm going to make bigger cuts on this now, so I'm going to stand up. I'm really going to kind of dig in on a few of these. Again, using that thumb lever, that really works great for me. I really like that, that cut. This one here, kind of the same deal, but in the opposite direction. This part of it's just a little bit thick here, so I'm going to thin this out. I do have my concave scraper that I'm going to use on this edge, which will smooth it out a little bit too. But I want to do as much knife work as possible because it takes less work. So I'm going to thin that out there, and this is a little bit misshapen up here, and again we're not going for perfection, but I do want to make it a little bit symmetrical. There we go, take this piece in here. This is the trickiest part right here, this is your really tricky part, because you've got grain going this way, but you have to cut cross grain, so, so just be really conscious of where you're working the wood. And you have to basically flip the spoon over about a hundred times and it drives you crazy, but that's how you get that that nice uh, kind of neck there in the spoon. I need to pull some of that out there. Again, I'm just pushing with my thumb, holding with this hand, pushing with this hand, keeping my fingers in a safe position. There we go. And I'm going to use a scraper here too, so that'll smooth out a lot of that. Don't worry if you got a little bit of chip out or anything like that, you're going to be okay. Okay, and I'm going to keep this spoon a little bit big. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't want a thin little spoon that's going to split and crack on you. You want something that's going to be robust. Alright, there we go. Cool. I'm going to work on the edge a little bit here. I'm just kind of Thin this out and get it a little bit closer to the bowl there. Not right on it, but get it closer. And down here I've got a little bit more material to move, so I'm going to kind of hack away down here. For the sake of the length of this video, which I always already feel is going to be pretty long. I'm going to cut it here and just do my final shaping around the edge. But basically I want a little bit here as far as a rim here, but not, not that much. So I'm going to thin this out and I'll be back. Alright guys, and we're back. And I've really got it shaped here. Okay. So there it is there. We've got the bowl. And I'm going to stand the thick side down here. There's nothing wrong with making a thicker spoon. What I'm going to do now is use this scraper here and this has got a little bit of a, a little bit of a curve to it, a lot of a curve to it. I'm just going to come in and I'm going to start kind of shaping these and I'm not wanting to be perfect but this is just going to kind of smooth it out. scraper just gives it that extra little touch, extra little finish. You gotta work with the grain and you'll tell if you're going the wrong way because it'll chip out on you. Yeah, that side's chipping out so we gotta go this way I think. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so it's wanting to go the opposite way and that's how it's been carving too, like it's just a little the grain is just a little bit sideways. There we go. Yeah, that's giving that a nice
this look, so I was going this this way on this side. So I need to go this way on this side. And then on the back, I've got this large one here, so I'm going to go this way. I'm actually going to rest this on the trash can here. Fine shape. And this stuff is friendly enough. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm on the. There we go. I was on the dull end. That's why it wasn't working. One side of this is uh, sharpened and one isn't, or burnished. I guess is the way that you is the correct term for it. And. I'm just kind of smoothing that out a little bit. You can already see how that that's kind of rounding off nicely there on those ends. I might come up on the top too and just run it a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna go this way. There we go. Just a little bit. There we go. My wife's home, so I'm going to turn it off. Alright guys, I'm back and I'm basically done here. I'm just running a little bit of sandpaper over it just to um, just to smooth out any any edges. I've got a few gnats here trying to buzz my face. Alright. And as you can see, you know, I left it pretty, left it pretty stout and pretty thick, but I made kind of a deep, uh, deep bowl on it too. So, anyway, some some guys will string you up for using uh, sandpaper, but especially the fact that I'm giving them as gifts, I just want to make, you know, absolutely a hundred percent sure that there's no splinters or anything on them. It's just a, it's just a matter of safety. It's, I don't feel it's cutting a corner if it's. Uh, if it's a matter of safety, and um, you know, you can get you can get really accurate, um, you know, when it comes to the scraper and everything. But I haven't found anything that smooths a bowl like a, a nice kind of coarse piece of sandpaper. It just really smooths it out. You can see even the edges, even the edges of the bowl are really smooth. You know, it's nice and contoured there. And, not, again, you know, you're not you're not going for perfection. You're just going for a nice, uh, nice kind of uh, handmade look to it, and nice roundness. And all the shapes and everything on here, I got with the hand tools. This is just, you know, this is just putting the final touch on it, and it should be good to go. So, in fact, I think that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Everything. Everything looks good, and you know, as a buddy of mine who's a really great woodworker, he said, I asked him how, I said, how long do you go on a piece? And he said, basically until it's a usable piece, and then I stop. And so that's the, uh, that's the advice that I'm taking. So, um, this baby's pretty much done, and I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys listening in if you're, if you've been listening in this long, um, you get a gold star by your name because I know this is probably going to be a pretty long video, but again, we're just carving and talking and all that. So anyway, you guys have a, you guys have a good rest of the day and I'm going to call this one, I'm going to call this one done. All right, thanks.